solve problems And you just never solve them Cause you always in drama It's alarming, it's alarming Girl, I just need clarity Can you just let me breathe, oh I don't wanna let you in But it's too late Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrexham. Season 2 is upon us. Welcome to Wrexham is back. And it's a great documentary in terms of knowing about Wrexham FC or Wrexham AFC, whatever you want to call a football club. But yeah, welcome to Wrexham's back. And the new episode, Season 2, Episode 1. And what I'm about to talk about today is where I had my two seconds of fame as a little backup dancer singer. We've got Super Paul Mullen. And, yeah, if you haven't watched a documentary before even watching the rest of this video, go watch the documentary so you know what I'm talking about, in essence, to how I'm going to digest the reaction. But here is the three-second clip featuring myself in Welcome to Wrexham, Season 2, Episode 1. The same as last year. Brilliant. So, so looking further into this, obviously, it was Chesterfield away, and it's noted that Chesterfield versus Wrexham at the Technique Stadium was the game in hand in terms of what was mentioned, which is later on in the documentary episode. Now, you've got to look at this in my issue because obviously it was a game I went to. They'd done the bit where the coaches went off and then they cut to the turf and obviously it cut to myself and A.D. Morrison. The camera's more focused on A.D. Morrison and we were singing we've got super Paul Mullen like the rest of the pub was. Um, it was. It's a sick moment, don't get me wrong. But in terms of trying to spruce up the atmosphere, it was crazy because if you look at the Chesterfield game and what I was wearing, first things first, I'm all three stone heavier than the Chesterfield game. Second things second, you know, I wouldn't have been in the turf if I was on the coaches. So there's so many things you've got to look at. Diversity's not really being the word I'm looking for, I don't think, but there's so many ways you've got to look at different scenarios. Now, how could I be on the coach if I was in the turf? That's one thing, but I think what they've tried to do is they've tried to spruce it up in terms of atmosphere to make the quality better. But in my opinion, the way they should have done it was because it was a late kickoff anyway. There was people in the turf before the game to use that atmosphere and to get the documentary people in the turf before obviously the coaches set off and to then get everyone's pre-match thoughts, actions, stuff like that. Now... Don't get me wrong, the episode in itself is class and I'm going to break down in terms of the full episode. So, the lad that they've got on there, oh, what's his name? I don't know his name, I think he's got a YouTube channel anyway. The lad who's got on there, the one who's got the little boy, um, you know, in terms of that, what they're doing, showcasing him and stuff like that, it's absolutely class, it's phenomenal because obviously it's showing his side of things, the thoughts and stuff like that. Um... But yeah, it, it's it's honestly a mad thing to look at. And then obviously you've got the King as well, which in all essence, Wrexham have signed James McLean not long ago. So welcome to Wrexham season three. It's going to be completely different in terms of the James McLean chance. But, you know, it's something that's interesting. It's something that makes the football club in terms of Wrexham. But yeah, it, listen, it's something that I didn't really expect for the first episode. Now, I just, I just expected it to be more about the summer signings and Elliot Lee and Mark Howard and things like that. And it was mentioned for a brief moment, but I thought, like, Elliot Lee probably could have given his thoughts a lot more in depth and, like, and stuff. There was, like, little bits where I thought, oh, well, they could have done a bit more of that than, you know, involving the King. But I understand the King in terms of Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. It's a, it's a big thing for them and not so much the Wrexham fan base. But it's exciting nonetheless, and it's good to be back watching it. So, honestly, the good thing that I would mention about the documentary is when Mark Howard is, like, the Chesterfield game show on Mark Howard and his thoughts in terms of, you mentioned, like, it's more pressure for Wrexham more now than ever because, obviously, Wrexham at that point, they had to start off very well. In terms of Wrexham, didn't start off the greatest last season. I think we all know that from a perspective anyway. I know they got the win against um, Eastley, it was, the draw against Yeovil away, then Chesterfield happened. I think... They missed out the Yeovil game as well, actually notifying that, because I'm sure Yeovil was after Eastley, because that was, um, it was, it was the day before my daughter's christening that, so it was, they missed out the Yeovil game, actually, and 
to be fair, it was a banger scored in that Yeovil game, and the heat in that game was absolutely scorching. But yeah, I didn't. I've, do you know what? I genuinely forgot about that until now. But listen, there's so many things in the documentary. It's going to be more interesting to watch as um much further as you go along. Now, what I wanted to actually talk about before bringing the Mark Howard thing up was in terms of what we actually filmed. So I've not really signed an NDA or anything like that. So fuck it. I'm just gonna. Basically, because I think because the clip's been used, they're not going to really use it again. So I'm going to hold my hands up to this. So if anything does come my way and a video does eventually get took down or anything like that, then yeah, you probably heard it here first. Now, what the scene was was we were all in the tape, and it was an open event, so anyone could come along and stuff like that. Because Wayne did advertise it on Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that. This was months after the Chesterfield game. And we got, it wasn't made to, because we all turned up because we wanted to, um, but they were showcasing the last episode of Welcome to Wrexham Season 1. So it was the last episode, so it was more of a reaction thing, so we could all really go and, like, recap, watch it and stuff like that. But this was months after the Chesterfield game, which was where I said, you know, my point was, was about three stone heavier than that Chesterfield game was in comparison to what I was in that video. So... There's a lot to really take from that. Now, I think for me, because that clip's been used, they've probably scrapped the rest of it, if that makes sense. Because obviously, further down the line, as we've seen episodes, you know, you're going to be introducing like Millie Tippin, who's a Wrexham fan. You know, there's going to be more stuff about Sean Winter, and there's a lot of stuff going into this Welcome to Wrexham stuff. Now, how much Wrexham are actually going to generate the seat, like from this, is going to be absolutely mega because. In terms of that, I, I'm not too sure if the documentary money goes towards the transfer budget. Now, whether that does or doesn't, obviously I've just mentioned I don't really know, but I'd assume not. But in terms of the club and funding club events and stuff like that, it, it's going to be major anyway. Because I think, in comparison, because Wrexham won the league last season, this documentary of season two will do better than season one. Because obviously... At the beginning of this episode, they've mentioned, you know, well, let's fast forward, and you know, because we lost the playoffs and stuff like that. So, a bit of a crazy moment, a bit of two seconds of fame on my end. But yeah, I do match day vlogs for every Wrexham game for as and when I can attend. I think I missed three games last season: Solihull at home, Dagenham away, and Made Ned United away. And so far this season, I've done every game that I possibly can. So. So one last thing I wanted to mention as well, for those who don't know me, is the pint in my hand. Because I mentioned the fact of, about watching the episode, the last episode in the turf and stuff like that. Listen, anyone who knows me knows if I'm in the turf on match day or things like that, I will have a pint in my hand. It's just mandatory for me to turn up to the turf and have a pint. It's, you know, get along with everyone in the turf. It's nice to meet new people and things like that. But yeah, as I say, if you are new to the channel, I am Jebo, nice to meet you, and yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, and tap that bell for more notifications, but as I went to upload, listen, I just thought I'd give me thoughts on my two seconds of fame, if I'm honest, but yeah, it's probably all you're going to hear from me in regards to this, unless some information comes up about how much wrecks I'm a generator from this documentary, or how successful it's done in terms of numbers, but as I say, I'll see you guys on another video.